geometers. This is a obviously a geometry video. It is chapter two, section two, and we are talking about logic today. So the first thing I want to start with is some vocabulary, some words that you need to know so that we have the same lingo as we talk about um, logic today. And so the first one is a statement. A statement refers to a sentence that is either true or false. So if you say something like, if I go home, I'll be tired, that's not really necessarily true or false. So we want a sentence that is either true or false. And so this next um, vocab word here, truth value, it's kind of difficult to uh, write the actual definition for it, but I think that once I tell you what it is, it'll make sense. Um, the truth value is actually stating whether the statement is true or false. So for example, I have a, a sentence here, a statement. It says a rectangle is a quadrilateral. So the truth value for this statement would be that it's true. So that's what we mean by truth value. So it's basically stating whether it's true or false. All right, so a rectangle is a quadrilateral. That is true, so we have a truth value of T. And then we want to have negation. A negation is when you have a statement with the opposite meaning and therefore the opposite truth value. So it doesn't mean that the statement will necessarily be false. It just means that it will have the opposite truth value of what the original statement had. So for example, we had earlier a rectangle is a quadrilateral. The symbol for a negation is to put this little squiggly in front of it and then we read that as not P. So not P is a rectangle is not a quadrilateral. And since the truth value of the original statement was T, the truth value for the not P would be false. Always they're going to have opposite truth values. And besides, when you read that statement, a rectangle is not a quadrilateral, that's totally not true. A rectangle obviously has four sides, meaning that it is a quadrilateral. So those are those vocabs for you there. And so we have a compound statement. A compound statement, like a compound word that takes two um, different words and puts them together to make one word, a compound statement is when you have two or more statements that are either joined by the word and or the word or. So the two types of compound statements that we have are conjunctions and we have disjunctions. So a conjunction is when you um, combine the two sentences with the word and. And a disjunction is when you combine the two statements with the word or. And for the symbol of a conjunction, we have this carrot looking um, symbol. It's almost like an A for and. And then for the or, it's like a V. And those are the symbols that we use for conjunction and for disjunction or for the ands and ors. Um, and uh, some tips for you to help you remember. Um, this will be very important later when we get to um, truth tables. But a conjunction is true only when both statements are true. So a conjunction is an and. So in order for you to have um, an and statement be true, it means that both parts have to be true. For a disjunction, uh, in order for it to be false, both statements have to be false. All right? So um, we have an example here for the um, conjunction. And it says, a rectangle is a quadrilateral. And so the truth value for that we said earlier is T, and then a rectangle is convex, that is also true. And since both parts are true, the conjunction, P and Q, where you have a rectangle is a quadrilateral and a rectangle is convex, would also be true for that. So it's only true when both statements are true. Because an and is like when you have to satisfy both conditions. It's almost like the inequality ands, where you have, when you say x is greater than 2, and x is less than, I don't know, 0. Um, it has to satisfy both conditions at the same time. If it doesn't, then it's going to be false. So if it only satisfies one of them, it would be false. For the disjunction, it'll be false only when both statements are false, because when you have an or, one or the other can be done. If you say, Mom, can I go to the store? And she says, yeah, you can go, but only if you wash the dishes or do the laundry. That means that you could wash the dishes or you could do the laundry, but you don't necessarily have to do both. But if you didn't do either of them, which would be the false, both statements are false, then you're not going anywhere. Okay, so that's kind of what's happening there. So we have some examples here. Example one says, use the following statements 
to write a compound statement for each conjunction. So we're going to do conjunctions right now in example one, and we'll get to disjunctions later. Then find its truth value, explain your reasoning. So we have three statements. P is the figure is a triangle. And we know that the truth value, I'm going to go ahead and write in our truth values. And so the figure is definitely a um, triangle, so that truth value is going to be T. The figure has two congruent sides based on the markings of the diagram. That is true as well. And the figure has three acute angles. That is actually false because one of those angles is a 90 degree angle. And a 90 degree angle is not acute by definition, it's a right angle. So a 90, I mean acute would be less than 90, so not equal to 90. So that would be false. So for part A, the first thing you want to do is actually write the conjunction. So for P and R, we're going to say the figure is a triangle and, because it's a conjunction, and R. And the figure has three acute angles. I'm abbreviating there. So, um, and then it says find its truth value. So for the truth value, we have to look at both parts. And remember that for a conjunction, it's only true if both statements are true. So the figure is a triangle, P was true, but R was false. So therefore, the truth value for this guy will be um, false. And that's basically me explaining my reasoning there. Alrighty. For part B, it says Q and not R. So notice that they want you to be familiar with both notations. So here they actually wrote out the word and, but here they just have the little symbol. But this means Q and not R. So for that, we're going to go to Q. Q is the figure has two congruent sides. So we're going to put the figure has two congruent sides and not R would be the figure does not, okay, so it's not R, so the figure does not have three acute angles. Alrighty? And so for the truth value, we know that the figure has two congruent sides. The Q part is definitely true, so the first part is true, but the not R will always have the opposite truth value of R. Since R was false, then not R will be true. So true and true means that the truth value of the overall statement of the conjunction is true. Alrighty, so now we're going to have you do this do-it-yourself question on your own, and then we will go on to disjunctions. So I wanted to give you an example of a disjunction because earlier we gave you an example of a conjunction. So for a disjunction, you have P is Malik, I think that's how you say that, Malik studies geometry. For Q, you have Malik studies chemistry. And then for P or Q, you would have Malik studies geometry or Malik studies chemistry. And again, just want to remind you, that um, a disjunction is true if at least one of the statements is true. So we said earlier that if your parents say to you, you can go to the mall if you wash the dishes or you do the laundry, then if you actually wash the dishes, then yeah, you can go. But you don't have to do both. You can, but you don't have to do both. So as long as one of them is true, then the disjunction will be true. But in order for it to be false, the only way for it to be false is for both statements to be false. All right, so once again, um, conjunctions are true only when both statements are true. That's conjunction, that's the ands. And the ors are false only when both statements are false. I can't say that enough. It will help you as you're um, going through the homework and stuff. All right, so here's example two. Use the following statements to write a compound statement for each disjunction. Then find its truth value, explain your reasoning. So the same thing that we were doing in example one, only this time with a disjunction instead of a conjunction. 
So for part A, we have Q or R, and I hope that I can write small enough in here. Q or R would be um, January. I'm going to abbreviate January. January has only 30 days or R, January 1 is first day of a new year. So I'm going to put is first day of new year. One thing we forgot to do at the very beginning was probably to give us the truth values from the get-go. January is a fall month. I do believe that January is a winter month, so that would be false. January has only 30 days. Actually, January has 31 days, so that would be false. January 1 is the first day of a new year. That is true. And so for Q or R, we have that Q is false and R is true. And since one of those is true, then this statement's truth value is going to be true. Remember, it's only going to be false if both of them are false. And in this case, one of them was true, so the truth value of part A is true. For B, we're going to do P or Q. So P is January is fall month. Or Q, which was January, has only... 30 days. All right? So for P, the truth value of P, January is a fall month, we said it was false. And January has only 30 days, also false. So because both of those pieces are false, this disjunction is actually true. So, so far we have true, true. Sorry, sorry. So I so mis misspoke there. I knew what I was thinking and said it wrong. It's false. You can only have a false if both parts are false. So, so far we have a true and a false. For part C, we have not P or R. So, not P would be January is not a fall month. January, not fall month. Or R, which is January 1. First day of New Year is first day of New Year. Okay, so the not P would have the opposite truth value as P. Since P is false, this would be true. January is not a fall month. And then R, we said, was true. January 1 is the first day of the New Year. And since both of these are true, then you get a true statement. Remember that for disjunctions, the only way for it to be false is for both of the statements to be false from the get-go. Alrighty, so now we are going to let you do this do-it-yourself question before we go on to doing truth tables. Okay, so it says here in example three, construct a truth table for not P or Q. So for a truth table, basically a truth table is a convenient way for us to organize the truth values for the statements that we're using and helping us to determine the truth value of negations and for compound statements. So one of the things that you have to make sure that you do is always make columns with headings that include each original statement, any negations of those statements, and the compound statement itself. Okay, so what you see that I've done here is I've made my columns, and I've got P, I've got Q, because I have a not P, I have a column for not P, and I don't have a not Q, so I don't need a column for that. And then the actual, um, in this case, this is going to be a disjunction. So I have statement, statement, original statements, negation, and then I have my um, compound statement over here. So you want to call in for each of those. Then you want to make sure that you have enough um, cases for all of the possible um, combinations of truth values. 
So all the possibles, for example, would be like this. So I'm going to show you here. Um, P could be true, and then Q could be false. P could be true, and Q could be true. P could be false, and Q could be true. And then P could be false, and Q could be false. So that basically gives you four different scenarios that you could have for the P and Q. Every time you introduce another statement, you're going to introduce four new options. So um, if you have P, Q, and R, you're going to end up needing 12 different um, combinations. So um, the order in which you put them doesn't really matter, but you want to make sure that you have all the right combinations in there. So now what we want to do is plug in our not P's. Our not P's are going to be the opposite truth values of P. So if P is true, then not P would be false. If P is true, you have not P is false. If P is false, not P would be true. P false, not P true. Alrighty? And then to complete the last column, you can look at just these two columns because it's an or of not P or Q. And we said that as long as um, both of these are false for a disjunction. That's the only way for a disjunction to be false. So whenever you have two false statements there for a disjunction, you're going to get false. But if one of them is true, then the disjunction will be true. So both of these are true, so that's going to be true. And one of these is true, so that's going to be true. And that's how you fill in your truth table. Um, and you have an idea of what it would take in order for you to have the truth value that you need or that you want. So now we're going to have you construct your truth table here for not P and not Q. Notice that in this case, you're going to have a, two different negations. So you're going to need a column for P, a column for Q, a column for not P, a column for not Q, and then a final column for the conjunction. This is a conjunction, it's an and, okay? So you're going to need five columns, and then you're going to want to have all the possible scenarios um, in your in your table so we'll do that i'll go over it in class but try to do that one on your own and so our next topic is going to be venn diagrams and in our venn diagram we are going to see how we can use them to illustrate conjunctions and to illustrate disjunctions so here we go we have a conjunction which is an and statement so you can see there that I have a rectangle is a quadrilateral and a rectangle is convex. So technically the only thing that's missing on my diagram here is that there should probably be um, a larger, oops, a larger um, shape that kind of encompasses them all. So this blue circle represents all quadrilaterals. And the red circle uh, represents all figures that are convex. So what this area over here means is that you have figures that are convex. And over here you have figures that are quadrilaterals. And in here you have figures that are both convex and quadrilaterals, hence the P and Q part. And then in this white space, you basically have figures that are not convex and figures that are not quadrilaterals. So that's kind of how you read those kind of things. So you can use a Venn diagram to illustrate a conjunction. You can also use a Venn diagram to illustrate a disjunction. And again, probably the only piece that's missing here is for me to have a shape that's kind of encompassing it all. And here we have a disjunction where it says a figure is a quadrilateral or it's convex. So remember we said that you could be either one or both. So in this case, you have quadrilaterals that are still um, in this P area. This is going to be a quadrilateral. Here's your convex. So anything in this white area is going to be um, figures that are neither convex or quadrilaterals. But if I'm asking you, in here, in here you have P and Q, this, this guy right here. But you can see what I'm, what I'm doing here with the ors. This is in this area that's not in this intersection part. In this area out here, it's going to be anything that is definitely convex, but not 
a quadrilateral. Because if you're a quadrilateral, then you're in this area here. So everything that's out here is going to be not quadrilateral and um, cube, or so and convex. And over here, you have the same thing happening over here, that if you take um, a quadrilateral and not convex. So again, if you don't look at this intersection part here, the piece that's out here that's not intersecting represents any quadrilaterals that um, are not convex. So you have the, the negations there. So for your ors, you actually end up, we know that the middle part here is the end. So your actual ors are going to come from this region and this region. That's going to be your P or Q. All right, are going to come from the two parts of the circles that are not overlapping. All righty. So now we're going to use Venn diagrams to answer these questions here. Okay, so it says the Venn diagram shows the number of people who can or cannot attend the May or the June Spanish Club meeting. So what we have over here in our Venn diagram is we've got this circle is May, and this circle is people that can attend in June, and so in the middle you have the people that can enter, that can meet in either one. And then of course you have people out here, like this number here, that can't meet in May or June. All right, so how many people can attend the May or the June meeting? They can be in either one of those meetings. Well, in order for us to figure that out, it would basically be all the people that we saw in the previous example that are inside the two circles, so 5 and 6 and 14. So we would take 5, oops, we don't want a highlighter, we want a pen. So we want 5 plus 6, which is 11, and 11 and 14 is going to be 25. So there are 25 people that can attend in May or June. B says, how many people can attend both the May and the June meetings? Well, that would be the intersection part, the P and. So that would be six. And then finally, it asks us for a description. Describe the meetings that the 14 people located in the non-intersecting portion of the June region can attend. So. So here's the June region, so 14 people, they're talking about these 14 over here, they're located in the non-intersecting portion, so they're not in this portion um, of the June region. So what would that, what would, how can we describe these people? These would be people that could meet in June, but not in May, all right? Could meet in June, but not in May. So we're going to write that down, could meet in June, but not May. Alrighty? And that's basically how we read the Venn diagram to answer the questions. So we're going to let you um, do this, do it yourself, number four. And once you have completed this question, you will have completed your notes for this lesson. And I will see you in class. And thanks for watching.